Hey friends, welcome to the third tutorial from AIPMT 2009 question paper, Biology section. Today again we will be doing a few more questions and guys I do hope that you all are working hard for your dreams with full dedication. And you know what, when dreams and dedication mix up, they form a very powerful combination which is enough to change your life entirely. So what are you waiting for? Just change your life and do as much hard work as you can, do study as much as you can and solve MCQs as much as you can. So without wasting any more time, we will start with question number 30 in this tutorial because we had finished on question number 29 in the second tutorial of this course. So the question number 30 is an example of a seed with endosperm perisperm and caruncle is which of the following so friends the right answer is option number one that is castor here you can see the diagram of and cross section of all the seeds which are given in the options that is castor seed coffee seed cotton seed and lily seed out of these four only castor seed is the one in which perisperm endosperm as well as the caruncle is present Actually, what does perisperm means? Perisperm is a structure which gives nutrition to the uh, parts which are given outside the embryo sac. And the endosperm gives nutrition to the entire seed. And caruncle, as you know, is an outgrowth of the micropyle. So, I hope this answers your question. Now, we are moving on to the next question that is, Guard cells help in which of the following? So friends, the correct answer is option number 3. That is, guard cells help in transpiration. Here you can see the diagram of a guard cell. This is the guard cell and this whole portion that you see is actually the stomata through which the movement or the exchange of various gases along with the water molecules takes place. And this is the part from which the water is evaporated out resulting in transpiration. Now the next question is question number 32 that is manganese is required in which of the following? So friends the correct answer for this question is option number 4. Manganese is required in the photolysis of water during photosynthesis. Here you can see the diagram. This is the uh, portion where photolysis is happening and in photolysis what happens this water molecule is broken down into hydrogen and oxygen and ATP is liberated in the presence of manganese ions and this oxygen is moved away of, out of the cell as a, in the form of a byproduct and this hydrogen is used up in forming a concentration gradient inside the mitochondria. Now, I hope this portion is clear to you and guys, if you have any doubt, you can ask me in the comment section. Now, the next question is question number 33 that is, oxygenic photosynthesis occurs in which of the following bacteria? So, the right answer is none other than oscillatoria. Here you see the pictures of all the four types of bacteria. Here, oscillatoria, chlorovium, chromobium and rhodospirillum. So out of the four in oscillatoria the oxygenic photosynthesis occurs. Now you would be wondering what does oxygenic photosynthesis means? So guys oxygenic photosynthesis means a type of photosynthesis in which the oxygen is evolved. For example the photosynthesis which occurs in green plants or the land plants is a type of oxygenic photosynthesis. You know, in some bacteria, non-oxygenic photosynthesis occurs as well, in which instead of oxygen, some other gases are evolved. Now, I hope this point is clear to you. We will be seeing the next question, that is question number 34, which is, a fruit developed from hypanthodium inflorescence is called which of the following? It's a very easy question. I hope you answer it. The right answer is option number 4 that is Psychonus. Now, 
This is a fruit of Cyconus, which is actually a fig fruit. So guys, what does Hyponthodium inflorescence means? Actually, Hyponthodium inflorescence means a type of inflorescence in which the receptacle converts into a cavity-like structure. You can see it here. This cavity-like structure is actually the receptacle part and inside this cavity, the fruit is formed. This red, red portion that you see is the fruit, which is the edible part. Okay, I hope this portion is clear to you. Now we are moving on to the next question that is question number 35, which is the annular and spirally thickened conducting elements generally developed in the protoxylum when the root or stem is in which of the following stage? So guys, out of the four, the right answer is option number one, that is differentiating stage. If you see the structures here, these annual rings, the annual and spirally thickened conducting elements, which are, they are formed in the differentiating phase actually. What happens, this uh, protoxylum, it differentiates and according to season, it forms the annular or the spirally thickened conducting elements or the rings, which are shown here in the diagram. And guys, this is also given in NCRT. So please go through it once. You can see the diagram from there. Okay, the next question is question number 36. The floral formula which is given here is that of which of the following plants? So friends, this question is from a very important portion of NCRT. And the right answer is option number one that is tobacco. The floral formula which is given here is of the family Solanaceae and since tobacco belongs to family Solanaceae, hence the formula is of tobacco. Here you can see the diagram. This is the floral diagram of the family Solanaceae and this is the floral formula. Here I have attached a few more floral formulas of different families. Though the three given in NCRT, Solanaceae, Fabaceae and the Liliaceae are very important, still you can learn the other formulas too. It can help you in AIMS. Now the next question, question number 37. An example of exile presentation is which of the following? And friends, it's a very easy question. The right answer is option number four, that is lemon. So, these are the various presentations and lemon has got exile presentation. So, I'll explain, explain all the presentations one by one. The first one that you are seeing is marginal presentation, which is found in P. The second one is the exile presentation which is usually seen in tomato and in lemon as I told you. The third one which is parietal is found in mustard and argimon. The fourth one that is pre-central is seen in dianthus and primrose. The fourth and the most advanced type of presentation is found in sunflower and marigold. Guys the examples that I am telling you are very important. So, please do learn them all. They can be asked in NEAT. Now, the next question, which is question number 38 is, In barley, stem vascular bundles are arranged in which fashion? I can give you a slight hint. You just have to guess whether barley is monocot or dicot and you will be able to answer this question. So, guys, the right answer is option number 3. Since... Barley is a monocot plant. The vascular bundles are closed and scattered. Here you can see the cross section of a monocot stem where the vascular bundles are closed as well as scattered. And this is the cross section of dicot stem. It's a very important portion. Do not skip it. Now the next question is question number 39. Aerobic respiratory pathway is appropriately termed as so friends, the right answer for this question is option number 4. Actually, the aerobic respiratory pathway is catabolic as well as anabolic and hence it is termed as amphibolic pathway. That means 
the substances are formed that is the catabolic portion and they are also broken down which is the catabolic portion and hence it is called the amphibolic pathway now we are further moving to the next question as well as the last question pellicet parenchyma is absent in leaves of which of the following again a similar question to the previous of previous question in this two you have to just guess whether the plant is monocot or dicot and you will be able to give the answer so friends the right answer is option number 2 that is sorghum actually sorghum is a dicot plant and rest all are monocot and here you can see the transverse section of a leaf and these tall and parallel cells are called the pellicid cells and these are present in dicot leaves to prevent the absorption of extra amount of light here you can see the xylem and phloem are present so these pellicid uh, cells they prevent the direct absorption of light and they absorb most amount of light within themselves these cells have also got more amount of chloroplast to undergo photosynthesis so here the tutorial ends i hope you enjoyed it and guys if you have any doubt in any question you can ask me in the comment section and if you have any feedback or any recommendations which you want to give you can give me in the comment section so i hope you like the tutorial and if you like it you can follow me at my unacademy profile so wish you all the best good luck bye bye